one of Asbury's heroes, but he's versatile. He also loves Madonna. Look for the cult they'll be performing locally in March. How did, how did touring this last time differ from the times you were over here when you weren't quite as well known? Uh, it's, we're getting much better treated now. You know, so now we're a serious concern. Like the first time we came over, we sort of like a joke tour, really. I mean, we were just like playing really, really small clubs with dodgy, really dodgy promoters and stuff. And, uh, you know, sort of like missing planes and like traveling 500 miles overnight and then doing a gig then 500 miles overnight and then, get, and then doing another gig sort of thing. And it was just like ridiculous, you know. 3,000 miles overnight. Yeah. Like oh, it's just, it was crazy. But it was a lot of fun, though, looking back on it, you know. It's good fun. That was about two years ago, the first time we came over. But now it's sort of like a bit more serious. Do you find a lot of people thinking that this past visit was your first visit here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, like, we're, we're only a new group, you know, it's just like beginning for us over here. So a lot of people, you know, just think that we're, like we've only just begun, sort of thing. We've got like a two previous, like, two and a half year history, sort of thing, but not, not many people are really aware of that. Well, if we could, mm. as I said, I think you've been over this before with MTV, mm. but maybe if we could reiterate again yeah. a little about the group's history, and I guess this time for a change, mm. why don't we start with uh, maybe Billy, if you could tell people a little of like, uh, well, what Theatre of Hate were about, and what... Theatre of Hate, yeah. And wait, how, I mean, did you find, for instance, on your visits here, do you find people coming to gigs who remember you from that, or are still interested in Theatre of Hate? A few, very few. They didn't really, Theatre of Hate didn't really achieve much outside Britain. They did a lot within Britain and, and Europe, but we weren't an international success. It was quite a short-lived thing. And, I mean, they, they, I wasn't in it very long. It wasn't even my band, really. I was just, like, a guitarist in the band. I didn't write anything. Something to do. Yeah, I just had the right haircut. <laughs> so they let him in the group? So I got, got in the group. That's why I asked him to join. When I, when I left my first group, that's what I thought. Get, get him in because of the hairstyle. And the guitar. And the guitar, yeah. Substantial guitar. guitar. So that's actually how it happened, uh... Shut yeah, up. well, yeah. I met him, when I was in my first band, right, I, I met him because we were supporting him in Theatre of Hate and then and we both sort of like, we, we both left, you know, the groups and then we decided to like form our own band and, uh, which began off as Death Cult but we dropped the death out of the name for like obvious reasons, you know, because it's like so down and uh, I mean like, we spent sort of like two and a half years building it up, building it up, building it up and we sort of like finally come around to America now because we were sort of like mainly gigged in, in um, Europe and uh, in Britain as well, I mean, like in Britain, it's, you know, it's sort of like we're doing really well over there, and I hope we can do the same thing over here as well. Yeah. Did the cult ever consider, or have they considered working with a name producer? Or, well, I we mean, are. Like <laughs> we are working with like a name producer at the moment, Steve Brown, who's responsible for like a uh, Wham, 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 Wham yeah. Success, <laughs> and ABC, and numerous other bits and pieces, you know. Um, so, I mean, like, in that sense, yeah, we are. We're open to, yeah, I mean, but the thing was, nobody, uh, nobody would have us. No, <laughs> nobody, nobody would have us because we don't pay them enough. Yeah. A lot of the big producers just want so much money, we, and, like, A, we didn't have it then, we haven't even got it now. So it was like, we had to get somebody who was a little more economical. Yeah. You know, a family-sized pack person. So how did you end up with Steve Brown? Um, we just, like, we, we sort of, like, put feelers out for producers, and he just, like, walked into the office one day, for sort of like yeah. doing producer auditions. So like this manic guy came in, he'd been up in the studio for like three days or something. And he just said, like, I've got to work with you, I've got to work with you. He went, it, went away, he came back with sort of an arrangement for Sanctuary. And we thought, that's the arrangement we've got. And we just thought, oh, we've got to try him, because he's such a head case, you know? Because guys... Yeah, we thought he was either a complete lunatic or really brilliant, you yeah. know what I mean? It's like one or the other. Because most, most of the people that we saw weren't that good. It's great now because like since since what we've done with Sanctuary in Britain, it's like Steve's getting so much work. So like Queen want to work with him, uh, Paul McCartney wants to work with him. And it's just like all these sort of people want to work with him all of a sudden. So we went so like you know all these old rockers coming out of the closet and like want to work with an ex junk uh, jazz funk producer because like us, <laughs> they're good. Yeah. I'm gonna fire him soon. <laughs> now going back to your first your first visit here, well not your first visit here, the most recent visit here. Um, can you tell us a little about your experiences when you performed on Saturday Night Live? Um, it was a bit, I don't know, it was a weird one though. It's like, it's just a lot of hard work, a lot of sitting around. I mean, there's a lot of sitting around in that. It's just like really intense, you know, especially sort of like as the, the hours drop away and it's getting closer to the show, it's just like so many people running around everywhere and it's just like really tense, you know. 
and like you're all crammed up in a really tiny, tiny dressing room, about 12 people in a tiny dressing room, just like nowhere to go. It's like you're trying to relax for the show. It's really yeah. awkward thing to do actually, playing live. I mean, you know, the, not, most TV stuff's mind. I mean, obviously, it's just, it's very hard to recreate anything like a, a record playing it live nowadays. It's just, especially through a TV, the sound's always terrible. Now, in general, with the cult, a lot of people have picked up on this whole late 60s, early 70s, mid 70s kind of thing, yeah. you know, that you cite in interviews yeah. and you talk about a lot. But frankly, I don't hear it that much in the music. Good boy. The hippie thing's something that's built up outside the band by yeah. the people. Yeah. Because, I mean, the media always needs something new to write about, so they get a new angle on a band, and it's like it was a growing thing, it was just a new angle. Nobody had been called, like, punk hippie type thing before and it was just a novelty which the band all at will and has outgrown the bigger the band gets the, the, the less important it is to sort of sensationalise I think it's just more, more like the fashion aspect of you know the way we dress and things like that that people have picked up on as opposed to the music because I mean the, the music is, is so contemporary and sound wise you know I mean, it's, it's just it's not, it doesn't sound anything like we don't like going to the studio and sort of like uh, you know, try and do everything in mono with like one microphone in the middle of a room sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, I think it's very contemporary sound. I mean, people who like read the interviews or read what, you know, the melody yeah. maker or whatever plays up about your interviews, I mean, the, yeah. the parts of it that they choose to use. Well, they're silly anyway. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's like the people who do that and go out and, you know, buy or, buy Love or something, mm. thinking yeah. that's going to sound like Led Zeppelin 2 yeah. and be real disappointed. Yeah, yeah very they will be very disappointed. It doesn't sound anything like that. Yeah. It's nothing, it's more, you know, it's just as much, you know, it know, says punk cool. rock, it's, yeah. it's just our sound, you know, it's a, a hodgepodge of things, you yeah. know, influences, it's just what's, what we've experienced and that, you know, it's, and it's just, I think it's just trivialis trivialises us, you know, I don't really, and I'm not interested, I just think it's a bit of a sick joke, talking about hippies and 60s and all. I mean, you know, I mean, I was about seven, yeah, when exactly. at the height of that, I don't know what was going on then, I have no idea. So who am I to sort of comment on it? Well, it wasn't my time, you know, my time was like the late 70s punk rock periods when me and him we were active. I just find it a bit insulting really, it's just, you know, it's not, it's not good, we're not a hippie band, we're not revivalists. Now the, the two videos we've seen in, in America from the cult are, you know, Rain and She Sells Sanctuary, and yeah. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the most recent one that we <coughs> hear, Rain, tell us a little about making it. Making it. And yeah. about the video itself, oh. and the director. Same director. Tony Van films. Ender, from, he's English. Uh, we just did it in a small studio in, um, in London. South East London. And, uh, you know, it's just not like... <laughs> <laughs> it's not well, that was, really, that was really amazing. <laughs> I mean, that was not, really amazing. Not really much to talk about video. I mean, it was yeah. yeah, it was just a pain in the ass. It was a long, t you know, it's, it took us a long, long time to do it. A day, I mean, for a day, we were working within a budget as we normally do, and uh, we just wanted to make it sort of like because the rain's quite much a sort of a boogie song. It's kind of like quite rock for us. It's kind of a rock thing. We wanted to make the video a little bit sort of colourful, a little bit psychedelic, a bit bit of go-go dancing and stuff in it because, you know, it, it offset the yeah, sound. Yeah, sort of like enhance the performance, you know. You know, it's oh, a bit static actually, we look a bit stiff on it yeah. in retrospect, you know, actually, honestly. Yeah. We didn't, it came across a little bit to us, I mean, you're always like your own, own biggest critic and to, to us I thought we were a bit static. A bit dynamic, it? that one. Yeah, it was, a, it was a pit, we spent too much time worrying about the special effects and go-go dancers and stuff yeah. and not much about how we looked. Yeah. The performance and that. Which is, uh, you know, you live and learn. Definitely. And we, we sorted that one out with the next one. Which you, you haven't got in America yet. For a song called Revolution, was a single in Britain. And uh, that was all live footage of us, which is pretty good. That's pretty good, actually. Pretty exciting. There's more. Offset against the track, that's quite good. But I don't know whether that's going to ever come out in America or whatever.